So you want to make a trait for Crusader Kings 3. Alright, so first things first, you want to go to Upload Mod. And then you want to create a new mod. We can name this whatever we want. I'm just going to name it Trait and then version 0.1. In the directory, uh, we want to name it probably the same as the mod name. So I'm just going to do mod slash trait. And then I'll just select tags you would like to have. So that for me would just be gameplay. We can leave mod ID empty as it will fill it out uh, on its own when you create the mod. Description has to have some characters in there between 10 and 8,000 characters long. So we have to put something in there. I'm just going to spam ASD, ASD. That is now create the mod. So upload it to Steam. And what that's done now is created a new mod ID. Uh, in this case, it's 3455, etc. And now what we want to do is we want to go to files you've posted and go to trade here and you can subscribe to it. So this is your own mod. We haven't done anything to it yet. We can now create a new playset here called Trait and then add that new mod to it. Upon creating these new mod files, you will have either disk or Steam versions. I prefer to use a Steam version as it has always worked for me. I have found some troubles with the disk, but some people like to use it instead. So I'm just gonna remove this from the playset. What we can do now is go to uh, Documents on your computer, then Paradox Interactive, then Crusader Kings 3, and then Mod. And what they will do is, it will have a new folder here called Trait, which is, we've just created, and Trait.mod. Uh, so if we go into the Trait folder, we've got the Descriptors Mod. There is an application called Atom, which I will link, uh, the, just download for that in the description below. But what that does essentially is just like, uh, saying what version of the mod we set it to. So in this case, 0 0.1, this is the name of the mod, the supported version of the mod. What you can do as well is actually just and add an asterisk in here. So 1.15 point asterisk. So what that does is that your mod is now compatible with a 1.15 point whatever. So it could be 1.15.3, 1.15.2. It will now be compatible in the launcher. Just going to control this, save that, uh, and X out of that. And so now what we want to do is go on our Steam here, go to Library, Properties of Crusader Kings, Install Files, and then go Browse. And that'll show up with your Crusader Kings install location. So I've actually got that pinned in my file uh, explorer just to make it easy. But if you go into Game, uh, the first thing you want to look, look around uh, is all the different folders and files. Uh, in this case, for this tutorial, all we need is the common and the localization and maybe the GFX folder if you are wanting to add any icons to the trade. But first, we want to look into the common folder and scroll all the way down to the traits folder. And then what you'll find in here is the traits.txt and the traits.info, which is again another atom. Uh, so this is outlining all that can go inside of the traits.txt to make your new trait. So these are all the different options that you can go through. You're more than welcome to have a look through. I actually encourage it. It is a great way to learn. Um, what we're going to use now is, so this is the file location. So we've got game common traits. If we go back to our mod, we need to copy that file location. So in this case, it will be common traits so once we've created the traits folder what we can do now is add a new text document and that would be 00 underscore new traits dot txt so what that's doing essentially is just copying the name of the file from the base game except changing the name so it doesn't overwrite all of the traits from the base game uh, so with this new txt file, we're going to open it with Visual Studio Code and that'll show up as a blank. I'm going to start creating the new trait now. So let's just say we want to name it authoritative. And then we need the category. In this case, it will be a personality trait. We're going to need a icon. So I'm just going to put brave.dds. So that 
there is what the brave trait currently looks like i am not going to be making any icons in this tutorial and then we're going to need a name i'm just going to use the same name as before so authoritative uh, and then what we can do now is put in the opposite traits for authoritative it could be craven and disloyal you can change these up uh, based on what your trait will be now we can start adding in some character bonuses so I'm going to do Marshall equals 2, but we can do prowess equals 1 as well. Um, we might even do some dread. Uh, so there are a bunch of different bonuses when creating traits that you can look through on the wiki and also throughout the files in the base game for inspiration and also for learning. So we've got the dread bonus here now. So what we can do now is actually add a same opinion. So what that does is that if you've got the same trait, so in this case authoritative, each character will have a five opinion bonus with each other and then we can also do opposite opinion as well so that would be minus 15 let's say uh, so anyone with the craven or disloyal traits will have a minus 15 or the authoritative trait will have a minus 15 opinion of the craven and disloyal people so we've added all of our character bonuses here so what i'm going to need to do now is add a ruler designer cost uh, so that will be what the trait costs to uh, put on a custom character inside the character creation menu. I'm just going to put it at 30 for now uh, as a default value. After that we can go to description. So uh, this one is a bit more text involved here. So we can do description equals curly brackets first valid triggered description. Um, trigger not equals exists equals th equals this and then description equals trait underscore authoritative description and then description equals trait underscore authoritative character description these are descriptions used in the localization file. Uh, we will get to that very shortly. But moving on from this, we can now add an AI uh, tendency. So you could add uh, AI boldness. So in this case, we'll have it as a dominant positive AI value. So that would mean that AI would be a bit more bold in their actions. Um, and then we can move on to compatibility these are traits that are typically compatible with uh, your trait that you're making so i would like brave trait to be uh, relatively compatible so we'll add it as positive compatibility medium and then we can go craven as well equals negative compatibility high and disloyal equals negative compatibility high so this is the trait uh, that we've made um, we could go further into it and add culture modifiers i'm not going to do that for now but this is what it would look like you just add culture modifiers in and then you can add parameter equals there is a lot of information in the base game files for example we've got uh, culture modifiers here this is the uh, base game traits so for example you can have mountain trait bonuses uh, you're getting extra combat rolls in your in mountain terrain. Uh, I will leave that uh, as it is in my trait without a culture modifier for now. And now what we want to do here is go back to our mod, uh, go back to where the descriptor.mod is, and then create a new folder called localization. And then inside that folder, we're going to create an English folder again we're just copying the folder paths within the base game file so we've got localization in english uh, and then down the bottom here actually not in another folder we've got the traits underscore l underscore english dot yml uh, so what we can do is actually copy that over to make it easier on ourselves um, and then rename it so i'm going to do new underscore traits underscore l english so you could name this whatever you like the new can be swapped out for any 
Word. Once we've opened that up, we can go through and have a look at all the different uh, descriptions and uh, localization of different things. So this, for example, is education level one of intrigue, amateurish plotter, and then it has a description and character description. We don't need that, um, but what we do need is to find the personality traits, which is right here. I'm just going to use the chase description here, so I'm going to control X to cut that, and then just drag everything below the top line, and then paste it back in. What we can do is well just add a comment in personality traits. What we can do now is add an owl authoritative trait here so we're copying the name here to make it easier we can copy it here make sure the spelling is correct I don't think I spelled that right the first time and then we've got the description so that would be this guy right here you can copy all of that make sure the spelling is correct and then we've got the character description Once we've put in all of these values here, you can change the in-game text here. So for my trait authoritative, the a strong hand rules the realm best. So you can add any text in here. This is just a description of the trait. Uh, and then you might be a little bit intimidated by the, uh, the root, get character, get first name. Essentially, uh, what that does is it just getting the first name of the character you're currently playing and then describing the trait afterwards. So I'm just going to leave it as is to show what that does uh, very shortly. So when you're in the localization file, you want to also make sure that you do have UTF-8 with BOM. It's a uh, save with encoding. So you want to change that to that, otherwise this may not work in game. So we've now finished our localization of the trait that we've just made. Um, so what we can do now is go into uh, the Crusader Kings launcher and then go to all installed mods, upload mod, and then we're going to do the trait mod, make sure it's on Steam Workshop, uh, and then upload that. So what that's doing is essentially updating Steam as to what you've added to the mod. Once that's done, you can go to uh, your Steam and then go to Workshop, Files you've posted, go to Trait, then you go Unsubscribe here, and then go back to your Crusader Kings launcher. You see that's no longer present on disk. Um, I like to have a specific workflow with this where I remove it from the playset, resubscribe to it, and then add it back to the playset. I'm not sure if this does anything, but it's just one way I like to make sure that things are updated and, and are working. Once your game is launched, we get a new game. Doesn't matter what start date you're in. We just want to see if the mod is working. Uh, we just go create new ruler, go to personality traits, and there we go. So our trait here, authoritative, is all working. We got Marshall plus two, prowess plus one, and dread plus five. Uh, and then all the opinions and also the description and the icon are working. So what I'm going to do now is quickly finalize that, press start. So this trait is now all working. We can see that the character description as well is here that we left on purpose to show what it does. So Sophia here is the root get character that we left in this file. So we got this dislikes intimate contact, avoiding the temptations of the flesh. And that is showing here as well. Alright, so that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching, uh, subscribe and like if you like the video. Thank you.